Gracious Father, we come before your Son now, his precious words um, that you guided through the Holy Spirit. Lord, as we take a look at we're on your team, that you have picked us, chosen us, despite of all of our shortcomings, thank you for your powerful will and love for us. Guide us this morning, in Jesus' name, amen. There's a farmer who really loved to share the love of Jesus to everyone he met. And so he was out there farming one day, and he looked up, and he loved God's creation. He saw these clouds, and you know how you can find pictures um, in those clouds, and if an elephant or a dog, and he saw two letters up there, a P and a C. And he knew exactly what that meant, preach Christ. And so he gave up his farm and became a preacher in the town there, but he gave terrible sermons. And uh, one day a neighbor came, came out from the church service. He goes, preacher, I think that P and C really stood for plant corn. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're going to embark on a journey of a small book, a letter in the New Testament, the book of Colossians. And it's kind of neat because it really is fitting for this whole Olympics, um, not physical Olympics, but spiritual Olympics. And that's our journey today. And it's kind of neat. And Kelly, who helped me a confirmation for many years, you know, you have the, the New Testament books. You first you have the four Gospels. What are the four Gospels? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Cool, all right. Then after John, we have the book of Acts. All right. Then you jump into the letters of Paul. And so the first one is Romans, and that's the Lutheran book, which we, uh, Martin Luther changed, uh, God changed his journey in life. And then after Romans, you have first and second. All right. And then Kelly taught me this, um, were the next four little books that you can remember. And she goes, remember this. Go eat popcorn. G is for Galatians. E is for, he's all right, eat. And then pop, P is for Philippians. And then C is Colossians. And so here's our journey today. That's probably the only thing you'll remember today is corn or popcorn in our journey today. Colossi is, um, is in the modern-day Turkey area. And so uh, in our journey today, Paul is in prison. Interesting, he has never been there. And we'll talk about that through our journey the next three months. I've never been there. And so he begins, I'm talking about, this is Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus. What is an apostle? Apostle is one being sent. Um, he is um, like Alan Radloff. Alan, just raise your hand. Thank you so much for providing our guest pastor last Sunday. He did. I heard he did an incredible job. And um, thank you for all who participated and helped. And he really appreciate all three services and all the leadership that is provided for us. But Alan has been selected by the Northern Arizona churches to be the, the member, the lay member, to be our delegate to our synodical convention in July in Wisconsin. And he came from Wisconsin, and so he's excited to go back to see family and friends. But a delegate, he goes, and so one, one is sent by a man as the man himself. And so that's Paul. And then you get, by the will of God. By the will of God. And that is cool. It's almost like God's best offer to you. He, ha he desires to have you a part of his family. He has a desire, a wonderful desire. He doesn't command us. He doesn't force us to be part of his family. But he has a love for us. So that will is desire, God's pleasure to have you among his family in his purpose. I got to go to Portland last week and visit my daughter, Natalie, and she says hello. You're very supportive to her over her years, and especially when you sent her to Czech Republic to be a missionary where she taught English on the first half of the session, and then she taught the Bible the second half. And she went all over um, Eastern Czech in those areas to teach English and then a bridge to teach the gospel. We played nine holes of golf, and so you talk about God's will. A guy came up to a hole, and there's water between him and the flag. And so many of us golfers, when we have water in front of us, do we get the best ball out or the worst ball out? The worst ball out. I know I do. And I um, put it down there, and he comes up, and he's about to swing. And, um, and all of a sudden, the voice in the sky goes, he, he put his worst ball out there. All of a sudden, the voice says, put out your best ball. 
And so he goes, okay, it must be God. So he put his best ball out there, and then he's about to swing, and then the voice goes, take a practice swing. So he steps aside, and he takes a practice swing. goes, oh, this feels really good. He goes back up, and the voice says, put out your worst ball. <laughs> This is interesting as we celebrate God's love and his will for us. Paul was an enemy of God. As we know, Paul was out to get God and his people. God thought he was righteous enough by himself that he could do what God has called him to do, but he missed the mark. And God, Paul was going to Damascus, and you know the story. All of a sudden, Paul was blinded. And God changed the direction for Paul. God gave Paul an incredible gift. God gave Paul leadership skills, but he was using it for all the wrong reasons. And so he calls them out, and God's will for us is not our will, because God knows better. He designed us to do some amazing things in our lives, and so often we do it selfishly or self-righteously for ourselves, but God has a better offer for you and I that he calls us to be a part of his life and to advance the gospel. Verse 2, to the saints and faithful brothers. Interesting, saints in the Old Testament is one who is holy. All right, so who's holy in the Old Testament? God is holy, and everything he designed is holy in his tabernacle than the temple. We're not holy in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, what is saints? We are set aside, chosen, pick, you can say. So this Greek word saying saints is that you've been set aside to be holy. You have been selected by God, all of us, whether you know it or not. You are precious in God's sight. Where Paul self-righteous, trying to earn his own way. Now he's been called by God, set aside for you and I. And brethren is a great word too. Brethren is that we're in a great relationship with our Lord and Savior. Grace and peace. Grace in the Old Testament. Every, whenever you fall, what sometimes we say? Graceful, right? You know, we, we stumble and, oh, I'm really graceful here. So grace in the Old Testament is lovely. Lovely. What is lovely in, in the New Testament? What is grace in Greek? Gift. It's favor. A free gift that God has given us. And peace. Peace is, I love it, peace in the Old Testament, shalom, greeting, friendly. Greek in the New Testament, peace is ceasefire, harmony. And that's what Jesus, his forgiveness, you and I, that he calls us to be and be a part of. And that's a beautiful. And then you get to verse 3, thanksgiving. We thank God for you. We pray for you. And that is daily prayers for others. And you guys do that. You never stop praying for others, giving thanks and asking for protection, especially being a part of God's family for our loved ones who are not. Kind of neat, the church that I visit with my daughter and where she worships, she teaches Sunday school. I'm very excited that she does that, her and her husband, at the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. And so that's exciting. And, um, but they have a guy who makes mugs for everybody, coffee mugs. He makes the name of everybody, and so they save a lot of money not buying those styrofoam cups all the time, right? And uh, it's kind of cool. And then people rinse when they're done, and they have a big stack of names, and, um, and that's being a part of praying and encouraging one another. Then you get to verse 4. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love that you for all the saints, we have heard of your faith. Paul was never there, as I mentioned. And so this is neat. He's writing to churches around. It's a domino effect. Paul has taught others, and others have gone out, as we'll see throughout the month, is that they, now he hears of what other of his students are doing, heard of. People being heard of, people are talking about you. <laughs> people are talking about you, whether you like it or not. And, uh, but a lot of times, that's where we share our faith, is our response, our actions, our behavior, is that we heard of, as Paul hears, about the faith in Colossians. And then you get down to verse 5, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, for this you have heard. And this is what's neat. It talks about faith. It always starts with faith, uh, being justified that God loves me no matter what jumps to love, yeah, I, he's freed me, and love turns into hope. 
a hope of a future. In the Greek culture, they talked about hope was like a circle. And it wasn't anything. Just living from day to day. Where Christ comes and he breaks that circle and now you have a future. A future that you know you're going to be going somewhere. You know that you have God's promises. You know you have God's, he'll help you endure your suffering that you go through. And this is going to be important for this town, as I'll mention at the end. And then you get to verse 6, and he celebrates which you have come to you, as indeed the whole world is bearing fruit. We all love fruits. And it's near in the Christian world that talks about when we share our love, people get a taste of fruit. What is your favorite fruit? And you think about, man, that is cool. And that's the fruit, in a sense, that you share with others. Everyone has a unique gift that you love and care, you help behind the scenes, whatever it is, your smile, your words, your listening ears. And man, when you use those gifts, where they hear the love of Jesus in those gifts. And I thank you, this congregation does such an awesome job when you do that. And then verse 7, just as you'll learn it from Ephraim, our beloved servant, he's a faithful minister of Christ. This is the baton. Paul has taught him. Now he takes a baton, and he goes and passes it on to that city. And so on and so on. And that's what we have. We're going to celebrate the, the Olympics and celebrate what Christ has done for you and I. He has washed our sins away. That we are saints, not because of we, what we have done, but what God has done for you and I. There's a powerful story back in 1925. Alaska, Nome, Alaska. There's an illness. An illness that would take and cover your airways. An infection called defuria. And it took over, and they didn't, the medicine that they needed was over a thousand miles away from another city. And they didn't, only transportation they had in Alaska was what? Dog sled. It would have taken two weeks, over two weeks, to get there, and most of the people would pass away at that time. Until one guy decided he was a trapper, and he shared this. He goes, Bill Shannon. A trapper from the city of Nenana suggested a better way to get the medicine there. He goes, one dog sled team couldn't make the whole trip without having to stop and rest. But if each town between Nineveh and Nome would prepare a fresh dog sled team and driver, they would act as a relay team. While Bill calculated that it would only take nine days for a relay team to deliver the medicine. The relay idea worked well at first. Surely but surely, the medicine made it all the way through the first four towns between the two towns. But the fifth driver, Gunnar Gason, something went wrong. A blizzard threw Gason off his route so that he passed by the cabin of the sixth driver. Gason utterly lost in the storm. To make matters worse, the blizzard temporarily blinded him. His only hope was that his lead dog, Palto would remember the way. For 53 miles, the blizzard pounded both the driver and the dog sled team. Palto should have needed to stop and rest, but he kept going. That's why we have Comfort Titus always with us, right? Dogs. <laughs> and somehow, in the spite of the blizzard, he made it. By the time they reached the city, Jason was all semi-conscious and actually frozen to his sled. But Balto, the other dogs, had gotten him safely to Nome. Amazingly, the medicine had been delivered in only six days. All but two people in the city of Nome survived the epidemic. The relay. We celebrate the spiritual Olympics as that God has called us to be on the relay team, to pass that faith as Paul did to each of his disciples, to share the love and the comfort of Jesus Christ. Interesting, in the history, Colossae, about maybe a year or two after they got this letter, they had a major earthquake. And a lot of people lost their lives. What a blessing that God's word hit them first to share about the love of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time